Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about why it's so hard to learn a new language. All right, so today I want to talk a little bit about learning languages. Not just, I mean, computer languages, you know, definitely, but also, you know, just you know, languages, spoken languages, right? So this is something that I'm, that I'm pretty passionate about. If you look at all of our apps, you know, there's two big themes there. There's like spy apps and there's language learning apps, right? And sometimes we mix the, the themes together a little bit, but it's just something that I've always been passionate about, right? So, I mean, if you don't know my background, I mean, just to, to let you know, you know, to, to let you know a little bit about why. Like I've, you know, when I was in high school, I took you know, I took, I took French, I took a semester of French, which I failed. I mean, it's, yeah, I failed a few classes in high school and it wasn't because, you know, I just couldn't do it. It was just because I never applied myself. You know, when you're a teenager, you're just like, oh man, the last thing you want to look like is you're, you know, you know trying or whatever. So I failed French, right? And then after, you know, after I finished high school, you know, after I graduated from high school, I decided to join the military because, you know, it wasn't really, my grades weren't good enough to go to, to university or to college or whatever, at least so I thought. And uh, so I, so I decided, you know, it was, easy. I had a job at McDonald's and I thought, you know, and I was, it was either, it was really close between staying at the McDonald's and just, you know, maybe I could become like a manager or whatever and, uh, or, or joining the military. So I, I joined the army. Right? And I went in to see the army recruiter and he asked what I would like to do, what kind of job I'd like to do. And for some reason, I, and I still I have no idea why I said this, I said, I want to be a cop. Like I told him I wanted to be military police just because at the time, I mean, it wasn't even like I was thinking about it before. Just at the time, it just sounded like it would sound really cool saying it, right? It sounded really cool. He said, yeah, yeah, I want to be a cop. So, you know, he said, okay, well, let me just, you know, if you just take this test, it's like a, a language aptitude test. It was called the, the D-Lab. The, Defense language aptitude and battery. So they gave me this test when you had to sit down and, and they gave they had like a fake language and you had to decipher what it meant. And at the end of that they said, you know, you have a an aptitude for languages. You you know, you were naturally I mean you you you're very good at learning languages, which I said, well, no, because I failed French, right? But you know, they said you could go into military intelligence and, and that kind of stuff. And I thought, you know, me being you know, the James Bond fan that I was, you know, I thought, you know, oh, that'd be like spy stuff. That would be so, you know, that, and then my mind's racing and I said, yeah, that's what I want to do, but I want to learn Russian, right? So, I, you know, I'll go in, you know, this sounds really good, but, you know, I want to learn Russian. They said, the thing is, we can't guarantee you Russian, but you, with your scores, I mean, you'll get Russian easily. We'll put down, we'll write down there, you know, preference is Russian. So, you know, you'll probably get it, right? So, Cool, right? So I went to um, I went to basic training in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, where my son is right now, actually. So I went to uh, you know basic training at, at Fort Leonard Wood, and you know basic training. If you've been in the military, you know how how tough that is. It's just you know it's just a, you know, a tough time. And when we got to the end of basic training, there were a few linguists in in the um, in the platoon. There were, there were linguists. There were you know 88 Mike truck drivers. There were other you know jobs. So you know a lot of infantry guys too. Right, but the linguists all got, you know, we got our orders for which languages we were going to learn when we went to the language school, right? And I can remember the drill sergeants, you know, shouting down the hallway saying, Where's Ruli? He's going to be learning Chinese, right? And I thought, you know, and I thought, Chinese, right? There's, I can't learn Chinese. I don't know anything about Chinese, right? I, you know, I don't even, you know, that's like, you know, you have to be like super smart to learn Chinese, right? And it, and it was, it just, you know, in it floored me. It'd be like if somebody said to you, if you don't speak Chinese, if somebody said to you, hey, we need you to learn Chinese, right? It was like just, dude, it just, you know, you know, I, you know, I failed French. I can't do this. Of course, I wasn't going to say that, right? You don't say that to a drill sergeant, right? The last thing you want to do is, is speak up. So, so we went to, uh, went to um, DLI, which is the Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California, and I learned Chinese Mandarin for an entire year. You know, it was just like every day was in class. We still did some army stuff like PT, and occasionally we had to go to the, I think we had to go to the range at least once to qualify our, our rifles and everything like that for marksmanship. Uh, and then, you know, and I graduated from, from DLI, so, you know, with Chinese Mandarin. And I just, I mean, I squeaked by, to be honest with you. And, but it was after then that I started learning more and more and started getting actually better at it. And in fact, I've been to China a couple times, you know, and speaking with these business owners and everything like that, and it's really, really cool. So after I graduated and I was in the job for about, I guess about nine months, and there was a shortage of Vietnamese linguists. So they, they took volunteers from the Chinese linguists 
uh, at the job we were doing and they said we need some people to learn Vietnamese and I volunteered so they I went to school for like another I think it was I think it was nine or ten months right it wasn't a, a full year like um, like the Mandarin was one was but you know learn Vietnamese so in and Vietnamese is I you know, I'm to be honest with you, I'm not very good at speaking Vietnamese. I was much, it was much easier to read because it's Romanized. But, uh, but so that was it. So that was very much a, um, you know, that was, you know, as a linguist. So I identify myself with being good at learning languages. Fast forward about, a, you know, you know, 10, 15 years later, I took a course in Hindi because I was working at an investment bank and everybody I worked with, I mean, I worked, I had a team in, uh, I worked with a team in India right? Well, it's the same as I do now. So I thought, you know, it would be really cool if I go to like the community college and learn Hindi, right? And I took this 10 week course in Hindi, right? And I, I learned it, you know, I learned a little bit at the beginning, but you know, in the end, I just, I just didn't, you know, I didn't really retain anything. I mean, I would, I would uh, ask people at work, I say, you know, I, for those of you guys who know, I say, do you want to get something to drink? I say, yeah, kya a kuch kana jahate hai, right? And they say, I'm a woman, you should say who at the end. And I thought, oh, just, you know, just this thing, right? So I, I was never very good at learning Hindi. So the reason I'm talking about all this, because I want to talk about computer languages. Now, why was I able to learn Mandarin and Vietnamese or Chinese Mandarin and Vietnamese and not learn French and not learn Hindi? It's not really the complexities of the language, although French and Hindi both have masculine and feminine and nouns, you know, which really throws me and I think that sucks. But you know, I, I could have, I could have done it, right? The big thing was I didn't have a goal at the end, right? I just didn't, I didn't have a good enough reason to learn it. I, I thought it would be kind of cool to know how to speak French. That's the reason I took that class in high school, you know, against other electives, right? And, and I thought it would be really cool to, to speak Hindi, right? But it wasn't, that wasn't enough to actually go forward. Mandarin, on the other hand, it was like people just pushing you, you, you got to learn it, you got to learn it, or you, if you fail, you go off to do something else, and it was just like, it was part of my job, and I had to get it done. A few weeks ago, actually a couple months ago maybe, I, you know, I told you guys I was trying to learn machine language, right? To be honest with you, I don't know anything about machine language. Yeah, it was something that I picked up in the beginning, and I started studying, I started studying some of the tensor flow, and doing a little bit with that, which I, I find it very fascinating, but in the end, I never kept it going, right? And the reason is very much like failing French back in high school, right? Uh, yeah, I just didn't have a good enough reason, right? And, and this is one of the things I speak to people sometimes. They say, you know, I try to learn, you know, this. I try to learn JavaScript. I try to learn Visual Basic. I try to learn C Sharp, whatever. And they say, I just, I just couldn't do it. And the reason is usually because you don't have enough big enough goal at the end, right? The thing with machine learning is I just didn't have a big enough goal. When I was when I was working in investment banks, I'm learning C sharp. You know, I'm thinking professional development, or I want to build this project, or even professional development. I mean, that wasn't big enough, right? But some, you know, a lot of times when I'm working on something and I'm learning a new computer language, if I don't have something to really sink my teeth into, or even this dream that I think this is the way that's gonna, that's going to work, I don't get very far at all, right? And this is just, um, you know. It's the same with, I mean, the computer languages, I so say the way I find it is computer languages and human languages are very much the same. You have like a lot of quick wins. With human languages, it's, I can count to 10, I can say hello, I can say thank you, I could you know, have a few short phrases and sentences, but then it starts getting hard, right? Like, you know, like if you had to say, hey, where's the umbrella, right? That's really hard because you think, when am I going to learn the word for umbrella unless that actually comes up in a conversation? In China, when we were learning Chinese, I can remember learning the different types of pens and pencils. And, you know, it was like the you know the fountain pen, the gong bi, and the fun bi, which is the the brush pen, and all this kind of. And we just had to learn this. And you think, when is this ever going to be relevant? And there's so much you have to do. Very much with computer languages, a lot of times you're learning parts of the language, and you're trying to think, how can I apply this? And a lot of times you, it doesn't really ever come up, and you have to imagine what that's like, right? It's um, but it's but it's fascinating. It's a lot of fun. So my message today, I mean, I know I'm rambling on a little bit here. My message today is for people out there who, you know, you may have tried to learn a computer language or you feel like you just can't do it or it, it might be too hard. Most of the time, the reason is not that the computer language is too, is too hard because, you know, believe it or not, computer languages are meant for people to understand. It's not binary. Nobody writes something that they think is going to be overly cryptic for people. You know, when somebody writes a framework or a language, you're trying to think of something that's, that's low enough that you could do lots of different things with it. But it's also, you know, but it's also high enough. It's not 
you know, so close to the metal that you can't understand it and work with it. So you can figure it out. The problem is, is a lot of the times is your goal's not big enough and you don't think you could do it. Like with me with machine learning, I was like really keen on it for like a week, right? And then I was like, you know, I'm reading all this stuff and then in the end I just thought, you know, I'm never gonna learn this, right? <laughs> Which is that, that first doubt that pops up into your head. And I, di I didn't have a job that I had to do. I didn't have a project that I was working on and I just wasn't able to keep that going, so. Anyway, just my thoughts today, you know, it's, if you learned a, a, a language before, or if you tried to learn a language before, I've took a course, I've taken courses in sign language, I've taken courses in Spanish, right, just, and the reason I wasn't able to keep going was because I didn't have, I just didn't have that goal in mind. I wasn't going to, uh, you know, to, you know, Mexico or whatever, you know, there was just no, no reason to do it. So anyway, if you're trying to learn a computer languages and, you, and you're finding it hard, the reason is you just need a goal, you need a project to work on. Anyway that's it for today. I'm going to talk to you guys tomorrow.